the pre uh, previous uh, day okay today's class also we will record the present uh, presentation of the group sir uh, for today so today we will continue with the last part uh, of chapter 10 uh. consumer mathematics financial management so group three uh, is it the uh, evaluate uh, feasibility of the short term and long term financial plan okay so either they can afford or not okay afford um, to achieve uh, their short term and long term financial plan okay so this is um, important uh, in your life whether when you want to plan Okay, to buy something, okay, you need a good strategy. Okay, good strategy, good planning. Okay, you have to plan your financial. Uh, um, you have, must have a good financial plan to achieve uh, what you have, uh, what you want to buy. Uh, okay, so uh, group three, are you ready? Who... Uh, Yes, teacher. Nafisa, okay. Yes. Uh, all your all your members are here. Ah, uh, yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, okay, can start. Okay, teacher. Um, okay, I hope you can see my screen. So, um, without further ado, good morning to teacher and my fellow classmates. Today, we um, we will be presenting about um, a topic on Chapter 10, Consumer Mathematics, Financial Management. But before that, let me introduce you to my team teammates. So, first of all, we have Sirik Vidmon. Anisatul, Rutra Jyoti, Sharmila, and me, myself, Nafisa. So our topic today is short financial plan. But before that, let us look at the topics that we will be uncovering today. So first, we'll be uncovering the meaning, then the important importance to plan for the short-term financial plan, the goals to prioritize, um, smart, smart concept, and finally, some examples. So before we get on to short-term financial plan, we must know the meaning. So a short-term goal is, is actually a goal that we can achieve in 12 months or less. And this way, we can have greater chances of achieving our desired goals. And some companies also develop these uh, short-term financial plans to meet um, by budget and investment goals within uh, one year and also these plans have a higher degree of certainty compared to long-term plans um, jadi maksudnya plan short-term ni dia ada higher um, higher certain lah daripada long-term plans ni sebab dia senang nak achieve so um, actually I forgot to mention that we will both be using um, Bahasa Melayu and Bahasa English to ensure that our classmates understand on this topic today. So um, let me continue. Short-term plans also um, amended as financial and investment goals uh, change and businesses also use short-term plans to manage uh, short-term cash deficits. So reasons to plan short-term plan. Okay, I will pass this on to Rutra Jyoti. Uh, now let's continue with why it is important to set short-term financial goals for yourself. There are many reasons and now I will be uh, relate three re main reasons. First, manage your spending. For one, creating a budget and outlining your financial goals and priorities will make it so much easier to manage your spending. With clear goals and a plan to achieve them in mind, you will be much more likely to adjust your spending habits to reach those goals. Second will be focus your financial intentions. This brings up the reason 
Having financial goals provides an intention for your saving and budgeting. Sometimes saving money can be feel uh, aimless, like you are saving just to save money and not any other reason. That is when you are typically less likely to actually save. However, if you having uh, savings goals, the promise and benefits of financial independence, eliminating your student loan debt, saving for retirement or whatever else your goals are, will be strong uh, motivation to start saving. And the last one will be create checkpoints for your long term goals. One of the most important reasons to sh set short term financial goals is that passing your short term financial checkpoints will set you up to be able to develop and realistically achieve your longer term financial checkpoints. Oftentimes, it is extremely difficult to achieve long term goals until you are financially secured and have free enough to save uh, and plan for them. Achieving financial security is what short term financial planning is all about. Now we move to the examples of short term financial goal. Sorry. Uh, the examples include emergency fund, payments such as range insurance or student loans, credit card debt payments, personal goods, travel, wedding, minor repairs, and home improvement. Hello friends, today I'm going to talk about the goals to prioritize that related to short-term financial goals. Hani Satur has mentioned a few examples of short-term financial goals throughout a presentation. But in this next section, we want to hone in on what are typically the most important short-term financial goals to focus on. Of course, everyone's personal finances, goals and desires are different. But there are several areas that are critical to take care of early to achieve long-term financial health, success and sustainability. Sustainability means cholesterol. The next thing we are going to see is work on tackling your debt. This is one of the most important financial habits to establish early on is to decrease your debt as much as possible. Establish means monobokan. In this slide, we can see three of the most crippling and problematic types of debt. They are student loan debt, credit card debt, and healthcare debt. This is, of course, easier said than done. Chipping away at a seemingly endless amount of debt payments can feel like throwing money down the drain, but it is absolutely worth doing. And the sooner you start paying everything off, the better. Paying off these debts will not only free you up to spend your money on other things, but it will also increase your credit score, which of course opens many more financial doors down the road. Creating a pay payment plan for yourself can be an effective way to approach paying off debt. When creating a plan, it is important to consider the interest rates of your various debt. One effective strategy to paying multiple debts at the same time is to pay the minimum monthly amount on your low interest debt and then to make as many extra payments as you can on your debt with the highest interest rate. The next thing we are going to see is create an emergency fund. In conjunction with paying of debt, the other most crucial short-term financial step to take is to create an emergency fund in your savings account. An emergency fund is exactly what it sounds like, a chunk of money that you can turn to in case something unexpected happens. Unfortunately, circumstances like this tend to come up more than we would like. Something as simple as a necessary car repair can be catastrophic if you don't have the money set aside to pay for it. The amount of your emergency fund will vary based on your financial circumstances and lifestyle. But a good rule of thumb is, it, is to have at, at least three months worth expenses set aside at any given time. If you have the financial flexibility to do so, Transferring a fixed amount of money each month into your emergency fund can be a good way to quickly bulk up your savings. The last thing we are going to see is invest intentionally. This is another important short-term financial step to, that will pay dividends in the long run is to be intentional about investing. If you don't invest already, you should start. And if you do, you want to make sure that you are doing in it a way in a way that fits your financial goals, needs, and will benefit you in the long run. Once you have started on a few other critical short-term goals like creating your emergency fund, paying off debts, and establishing a budget, you should be ready to give your investment portfolio some bulk. 
by this point you should have a good idea of the amount of extra money you have to spend on the stock market so the next topic is going to present by my friend anisa tul so what is smart smart is an acronym that you can use to guide your goal setting jadi smart ni apa smart ni adalah salah satu kaedah ataupun method untuk membantu kita memantapkan lagi pelan kewangan jangka pendek kita So short term financial goals are the things you want to do with your money within the next few months or years. Some key short term goals include setting a budget, starting an emergency fund and paying off debt. Jadi to make sure your goals are clear and reachable, each one should be. So apa yang dimaksudkan dengan SMART ni? The letter S from the word SMART means specific while M measurable, A achievable, R, relevant, and T, time-bound. Next, I will be passed to Siri to present. Um, so, how to use SMART for the first one is specific. Um, your goal should be clear and specific. Otherwise, you won't be able to to focus your efforts efforts or feel truly motivated to achieve it when drafting your goal try to answer the five w question for the first question what do i want to accomplish why is this goal important who is involved where is it located which resources or limits are involved uh, example of specific goals is imagine that you are currently in a marketing executive and you would like to become head of marketing. A specific goal should be I want to gain the skills and experience necessary to become head of marketing within my organization so that I can build my career and lead a successful team. But the second one is measurable. It's important to have measurable goals so that you can track your progress and stay motivated. Assessing progress helps you to stay focused, meet your deadlines, and feel the excitement of getting closer to achieving your goal. A, me a measurable goal should address questions such as how much, how many, how will I know when it is accomplished? Examples, you might measure your goal of acquire, acquiring the skills to become head of marketing by determining that you will have completed the necessary training courses and gain the relevant experience within five years time. Uh, for number three, achievable. Your goal also need to be realistic and attainable to be successful. In other words, it should stretch your abilities but still remain possible. When you set an achievable or attainable goal, you may be able to identify previously overlooked opportunities or resources that can bring you closer to your goal. An achievable goal will usually answer questions such as how can I accomplish this goal? How realistic is the goal based on other constraints such as financial factors? Examples, you might need to ask yourself whether developing the skills required to become head of marketing is realistic based on your existing experience and qualifications. For example, do you have the time to complete the required training effectively? Are the necessary resources available to you? Can you afford to do it? Uh, tips for attainable goals. Beware setting goals that someone else has power over. For example, get that promotion. Depends on who else applies and on the recruit recruiter's decision. But get the experience and training that I need to be considered for that promotion is enti entirely down to you. For number four is relevant or realistic. These steps is about ensuring that your goal matters to you. And that is also aligns with other relevant 
goals. We all need support and assistance in achieving our goals, but it's important to retain control over them. So make sure that your plans drive everyone forward, but but that you're still responsive responsible for achieving your own goal. A realistic goal can answer yes to these questions. Does this seem worthwhile? Is this the right time? Does this match our effort our other efforts or needs? Am I the right person to reach this goal? Is it is it applicable in the current social economic environment? Examples you might want to gain the skills of to become head of marketing within your organization, but is it the right time to undertake the required training or work toward addi additional qualifications? Are you sure that you are the right person for the head of the marketing role? Have you considered your sports goals? For example, if you want to start a family, would it be able to complete training in your free time making this more difficult? For number five is time bound. Every goal needs a target date so that you have a deadline to focus on and something to work toward. This, this part of the SMART goal criteria helps to prevent everyday tasks from taking prior, priority over your, your short-term goals. A time bound goal will usually answer these questions. When? What can I do six months from now? What can I do six weeks from now? What can I do today? Examples, gaining the skills to become head of marketing may require additional training or experience as we mentioned earlier. earlier. Okay, um, lastly, we'll, we will be moving on to the benefits and drawbacks. So after we um, have explained the SMART acronym and how to use SMART, the SMART concept, let us look at the benefits that we, we have. So SMART is actually a well-established tool and the goal should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time-bound. So SMART actually creates clear, attainable and meaningful goals to develop the motivation and action plan and also support um, that is needed to achieve them. And also, when we use SMART, we can actually um, uh, provide clarity, focus, and motivation that we need to improve our goal. And it also improves our ability to reach them by encouraging us to define our objectives and also set a completion date. And these SMART goals can also be is easy to use by anyone and anywhere. So next, we'll be moving on um, for the example on textbook, um, page 282. And I highly suggest you open the te textbook to this page. So what we'll be looking on, what we'll, we will be looking on is Encik Yusof's financial plan. So the information below shows Encik Yusof's income and expenses for December 2019. Encik Yusof works as an insurance agent while his wife is a housewife. They have three children who are still studying. And if you look at page 283, Encik Yusof wants to buy a fast brand computer which costs RM6000 to improve his insurance sales within a year. Um, he actually has... Uh, it means that he, Encik Yusof, actually has a short-term goal, and that is he wants to buy a computer that causes um, RM6000. But let us look at his financial plan. So his net net income monthly is 5000 ringgit, And at, when you minus that with his monthly savings, then you have 4800 ringgit because the savings is 200 ringgit. And also, you minus again with other expenses such as housing loan and insurance that will cost up to 1500 And then you also have to minus his monthly variable expenses and that includes food and drinks, um, his children's education, petrol, telephone bills, utility bills and some 
bills for traveling. And that will include 3,300. So the surplus of his income is RM0. So if we look at the solution here on page 283, we can see the cash flow of Encik Yusuf. So the income balance, kita kena tolak dengan total expenses that he, that dia spend untuk um, bill utility dia setiap bulan. So RM4,800 tolak dengan RM1,500 tolak lagi dengan RM3,300. Jadi bakinya RM kosong. Jadi um, based on this financial plan, Encik Yusof ni dia tak ada apa-apa savings. Then um, it is difficult for him to achieve his short term financial goal and that is buying himself a computer. So we have we have to help Encik Yusof to solve his financial problem without using the emergency fund. So on to our next explanation. I will pass this on to Anisato. Okay, like uh, Nafisa said just now, we need to help Encik Yusof to solve his financial problem without using the emergency fund. Maksud dia dekat sini, kita kena bantu Encik Yusof ni untuk selesaikan pelan kewangan dia tanpa menggunakan satu sen pun daripada duit kecemasan. Jadi kalau kita tengok soalan A, does Encik Yusof manage his financial effectively? Maksud dia adakah Encik Yusof ni dia manage dia punya pelan kewangan ni dengan baik? Macam mana kita nak jawab, kita boleh kata He does not manage his financial effectively Because there are expenses that can be reduced Such as the spending of telephone, food and drinks Maksudnya dekat sini, Encik Yusuf ni dia tak manage dia punya pelan kewangan dengan baik Sebab apa? Sebab ada sesetengah belanja dia, dia boleh kurangkan Contohnya dalam sudut uh, telefon, makanan dan minuman Furthermore, he does not have any investment plan for his future. Maksudnya dia tak ada pelan pelaburan langsung untuk masa hadapan dia. Jadi kalau kita tengok pula soalan yang kedua. How much monthly savings does Encik Yusuf need to save in order to achieve his goals? Dia punya matlamat dia apa tadi? Matlamat dia untuk beli komputer untuk bantu dia improvekan lagi dia punya insurance sales. Macam mana kita nak kira, kita boleh ambil monthly savings needed uh, maksud dia simpanan bulanan yang diperlukan sama dengan RM6,000 ni harga untuk komputer yang awal-awal tadi tu RM6,000 bahagi dengan 12 bulan. Jadi kita akan dapat RM500. Uh, soalan C, how can an additional income be generated to increase the total income? Macam mana pendapatan tambahan dapat dihasilkan melalui jumlah uh, pendapatan. Jadi jawapan kita boleh letak Encik Yusof can increase his income by selling more insurance products and recruiting more new agents. Maksudnya Encik Yusof ni boleh menghasilkan income tambahan melalui uh, jual insurance barangan insurance dan mengambil beberapa ejen-ejen baru. Untuk soalan D ni saya serahkan kepada Siri untuk terangkan. Um, D, create a new financial plan based on the smart concept. Um, for the answer, the smart concept in the new financial plan for S specific, um, buy a computer that costs 6,000 ringgit. Maksud dia, um, goal in J. Yusuf ni, dia specific, um, yaitu, uh, hendak membeli sebuah computer yang costnya 6,000 ringgit. M measurable save five hundred ringgit every month, every month to achieve the goals. Uh, maksud dia, uh, Inci Yusuf kenal simpan lima ratus ringgit setiap bulan untuk um, mencapai goal. A attainable can save five hundred ringgit from the income of five thousand ringgit. Uh, Inci Yusuf uh, dapat Dapat simpan RM500 daripada income dia iaitu RM5,000. Are realistic. RM500 is only 10% of the total income of RM5,000. Um, maksud dia, uh, goal Encik Yusuf ni realistic kerana uh, RM500 ni hanya 10% dari total income iaitu RM5,000. Time bound. 
One year is enough to save 6,000 with monthly savings of 500. Um, maksudnya, uh, satu, satu tahun sudah cukup untuk Encik Yusuf simpan RM6,000 ringgit dengan dengan simpan lima ratus ringgit setiap bulan. Um, okay, so after that we can look at page two hundred and eighty four. So after Encik Yusof considered um, using um, the smart concept, here is his new financial plan. Jadi kita boleh tengok dia punya financial plan yang baru lepas menggunakan smart concept. Um, Okay, kita uh, tengok perubahan yang ada kat sini ialah dia punya um, fixed monthly savings. So, jadi dia tolak lagi uh, RM500 ringgit untuk um, ni lah untuk dia beli laptop yang harganya RM6,000 tu. Jadi, um, baki dia lagi RM4,300 dan um, dia punya fixed expenses pun juga um, sama. Uh, tetapi kalau kita tengok dekat uh, kotak warna oren ni It says that these expenses can be reduced if he spends money carefully So that means that all these expenses, these variable expenses Can be actually reduced if he spends the um, his income uh, uh, wisefully So Encik Yusuf savings of 500 a month can actually help him save RM6,000 uh, by end of the year 2020 to achieve his short-term goal. So, each financial plan should be evaluated from time to time based on several factors. So, one of them is Encik Yusof actually should focus on the current inflation rates that can lead to an increase in the cost of living. And this can also indirectly increase the total expenses. So, if that happens, Encik Yusof ni perlu uh, ambil tindakan tentang increase to increase his income. However, Encik Yusof's financial plan can be achieved as he has invested in unit trust. And also, these ex additional expenses can be covered by the dividends received. So, that is all for our presentation. So, if you have any questions, you can ask us before we move on to our live quiz. Uh, do you guys have any questions? No. no. Okay, so if not, I will send the link for our quizzes here in the chat box and also in the Telegram group. Uh, so you guys can join the live quizzes now.
dia kena ada 12 ataupun 13 dalam live quiz tu sebab uh, tolak ahli komplain kami dengan cikgu dengan Nafisa punya slide pembentang berapa orang dan Nafisa Uh, setakat ni ada sembilan orang dalam quiz tu Oh sepuluh sebab Ainun guna satu account So got another three lah ha? So because got here nineteen Okay termasuk Ainul twins nineteen lah Okay Tolak ahli kumpulan 5 dengan cikgu 6 So 13 lah So here got 11 lah Eh no no sorry 10 Another 3 siapa tak join lagi? Sangka Mitra and Yashini, have you joined? Are you here, Sangka Mitra and Yashini? Please answer. Uh, teacher, I'm here but my line is slow. I couldn't join the meeting. Uh, I mean the quizzes. You not join. Sangka Mitra? Okay, tak apa. Nafisa start lah. Dah tak, mereka tak jawab. Oh dia tak jawab, okay start okay.
Okay, and that is all. Congratulations to Sharvini, Alia, and Giri. So with that, I will end my presentation here. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, group three. I think Dina. Dina won the quizzes just now. Uh, uh, Dina. Uh, Dina. So congrats, Dina. So any question you want to ask, group three, all of you understand? They present about short-term uh, financial plan, no? okay? That means short-term, that means um, something you can buy in uh, around one year. Dalam masa satu tahun, boleh beli barang tersebut lah, okay? Itu adalah short-term uh, financial, uh, short-term goals lah, okay? So, untuk membeli barang tersebut, okay, you have to um, uh, must use uh, the smart concept. Okay, smart concept that means uh, S actually for specific. Uh, specific that means uh, you ada satu specific goal. Yang mana apa you nak beli. Measurable that means uh, ukuran. Ada tak? Goal you boleh diukur. So in that case just now, Encik Yusof plan tu ialah, uh, goal dia ialah uh, untuk setahun 6,000, that means one month we can count. Huh? Kita boleh kira, kita boleh ukur satu bulan ialah 500 ringgit. Then attainable, mampu tak? 500 ringgit, dia nak uh, kumpul lah. Huh? 500 ringgit in one month. Okay. Then realistic, is it the plan yang dia buat tu adalah realistic? Okay, then time bond, given is one year, masa. Eh? So all of you understand eh, why is smart? Very yeah, important. Yeah. Eh? Okay, so now we continue with the, the fourth group. Eh? Are you ready? Who? Yes, teacher. I know Camila. Yes, teacher. Ah, you are the fourth group, ah? Yes, teacher. Okay, so we can start.
A very good morning to Mrs. Shankari and my classmates. Today, my teammates and I will be presenting one of the subtopics from Chapter 10, which is financial management. My teammates are Nitya, Ainul K, Bhuva, Girijasri, and myself. Before we proceed to the next slide, I would like to ask you all, do you know what is the meaning of financial management? Let me explain you. Financial management refers to the strategy planning, organizing, directing, and controlling of financial undertakings in an organization. All right, everyone. Now I would like to welcome Ainul Kamila to continue the presentation. Good morning to, good morning to teachers and friends. Now I will be presenting about long-term financial goals. Okay, you all can refer to page 285, 286, and uh, till 288. Okay, first, shall we move the slide? Okay, long-term financial goals are as important as short-term financial goals. The purpose of the long-term financial plan is to make sure the goals can be achieved in the initial stage. And long-term financial plans usually exceed five years, such as children's education, retirement, and buying a house. In developing a long-term financial plan, it would be better to start saving because this practice can help us in achieving our financial goals faster. For example, we should prepare for retirement, buy a property and save for children's education. Long-term financial plans develop vary for each individual. Vary means different ataupun berbeza. The income of an individual or joint income of husband and wife allows an individual to have sufficient monthly savings in a shorter period of time. And to develop a long-term financial plan, the key aspects to be considered are as follows. First, we have inflation rate. Inflation rate is the rate at which prices increase over time, resulting in a fall in the purchasing value of money. The second one rate is interest rate. Interest rate is the rate charged by a lender of money or credit to a borrower. And the third one is for personal health. Personal health is the ability to take charge of your health by making conscious decisions to be healthy. Okay, let us look at example six. Encik Say and his wife intend to six years after getting married. is 6,500 6, ringgit. They both plan to buy a double story house priced at 720 ringgit with a down payment of 72,000 ringgit. Usually the down payment is 10% of the price of the house. So let us see the question A. How much is the monthly saving that Enke said and his wife must save in order to achieve their financial goal? Okay, first we have annual savings needed by Enke said. Annual saving means the saving of a year. So, 22,000 ringgit divided by 6 years because they want to... Buy the house in six years. 
and we get 12,000 ringgit. And for monthly savings needed by Encik Seri, 12,000 ringgit divided by 12 months. So, we get 1,000 ringgit. For Encik Seri's family, saving 1,000 ringgit every month to achieve their long-term goal is not difficult with the total income of 8,000 ringgit. So, now... The total income is 8,000 ringgit and the total expenses is 6,500 ringgit. So we must minus this both and we get 1,500 ringgit. So it is not hard for them to save 1,000 ringgit every month. Let us look at question B. Okay, B. Is it wise for Encik Said to buy a house priced at 720,000 ringgit with his current financial planning? Justify your answer. Okay, now we must calculate the price of the house is 720,000 ringgit. We must minus with the down payment that is 72,000 ringgit. So we get 648,000 ringgit. Okay, now let us say the interest rate is 4%. Maximum year for the loan. install 169 ringgit and 80 cent so it is so expensive for them after paying the down payment from the savings they only have 100 1500 ringgit so it is not possible for them to pay the housing loan in case their total income is not increased in six years. Although Encik Say is able to pay the down payment of 72,000 ringgit, his monthly housing loan installments can burden him due to high expenses. Okay, now Buwa will be presenting case study. Study. Everyone can refer page 286 and 287 in textbook. Assume you are a financial consultant. Mr. Wong, as the head of his family, has come to see you with the information of his monthly income and expenses as shown below. He seeks your consultancy to create a financial plan to buy a house. Mr. Wong works as a marketing officer in a company while his wife is a housewife. They have two children who are one and two years old. Mr. Wong would like to save an amount of 150,000 ringgit for his children's education in 15 years from now. Help Mr. Wong to create a financial plan to achieve his financial goals. Next slide. Okay, so uh, please observe Mr. Wong's financial plan before I start to explain the solution. Okay, share the next slide. Okay, so to create a financial plan, Mr. Wong has to know his annual savings first. Since he has to save 150,000 ringgit in 15 years, he need to know how much does he have to save for one year. So he has to divide by 15 years. So he'll get 10,000 ringgit. So um, per year, he has to save 10,000 ringgit. Then um, after that, 
he must know how much he has to save monthly to get ten to to save ten thousand ringgit annually. So he has to divide by twelve months, and he will get eight hundred thirty three ringgit and thirty three cents. So when you see Mr. Wang's financial plan, you see that he is already having a my fixed monthly savings about around two six hundred fifty ringgit. So he has to minus with the um, his monthly saving that he got that is eight hundred thirty three ringgit and thirty three cents with six hundred fifty ringgit to know how much more he has to add. So um after uh deducting six hundred fifty ringgit, he on um uh, Mr Wong needs to increase his monthly savings by hundred eighty three ringgit and eighty three cents. So, how can he save around that amount, that hundred eighty-three ringgit and eighty-three cents? He can reduce. Oh, next slide, please. Sorry. Okay. So, how can he save? Uh, how can he save that? So he can reduce the amount allocated for traveling by twenty-five percent in order to achieve his financial goal. Of saving money for his children's education, so he has to um, reduce around hundred twenty-five ringgit from his travel expenses. Uh, and now his new travel expenses is around three hundred seventy-five ringgit. And also he can cut down expenses on petrol by hundred ringgit by carpooling with his colleagues by practicing the above two suggestion. His additional savings will come around two hundred and twenty-five ringgit because the hundred ringgit he's saving from the travel expenses. No, ah, uh, no, seven hundred ringgit from the petrol and the hundred twenty-five ringgit from the travel expenses, giving him an additional saving around two hundred twenty-five ringgit. And the last one, Mr. Wong can also consider reducing the variable expenses to achieve his financial goals. Mr. Wong can do some part-time jobs to generate additional income. Besides that, besides that, he can invest the amount of money saved each year to earn passive income, such as dividend, sorry, dividend, bonus, bonus shares, and interest as an addition to the total income. You know, okay. If Mr. Wong is interested in investment. It is good for him to spend some time to read investment book or attend seminar and workshops conducted by true investors. But if he is not interested to learn about investing, then it is better for him to put his money in fixed deposit account. So now I'll uh, pass this presentation to Giriza. Okay, now let's look into Mr. Swan' new financial plan. You you can refer to the page two hundred eighty eight in the textbook. Next. The first calculation that we that we are going to look at is the total savings by Mr. Wang for one month. This calculation can be calculated by plusing monthly saving of six hundred fifty and additional saving of two hundred twenty five, which will get the total savings of eight hundred seventy five for a month. So now we will be calculate the, this equation for fifteen years, which eight hundred seventy five will be times by twelve months for a year. And then will be times again for fifteen years to get the total savings of Mister Wong for fifteen years. You get the total savings value of hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred. Okay. In fact, the total amount of money saved is more than hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred, as the savings in the bank offers interest annually. There are also some flexibility of Missus Wong financial plans that depends on some factors. Such as inflation rates should not exceed the pay rise. The rental receipt is fixed. Mr. Wang is healthy and continue and can continue to work. The increase of expenses can be offset by pay rise, rental, and part-time job. 
And lastly, nothing unexpected happens to Mr. Wang's family that involves high cost. I will pass this presentation to our next presenter, Sharwini. Thank you, Gireja. Let's look at question one. Please take some time to observe this table. The information below is related to Mr. Amelda's financial planning. A. Calculate of Mr. Mrs. Amelda's cash flow. Explain your answer. Based on this question, we have to do a calculation to find Mrs. Amelda's cash flow. Firstly, we have to take her salary, which is 6000 minus with housing installment, car installment, rental, utility bills, toll payments, groceries, allowance for her parents, and rental. So when I minus all this at the end, I got to find that Mrs. Amelda's cash flow is 1,600. In conclusion, cash flow of 1,600 ringgit is good because she can save and use that money for any emergency purposes. Okay, let's look at question B. Juan Amelda plans to buy a house worth 600,000 ringgit over six years period with a down payment of 60,000. Can Puan Amelda achieve her financial goals? Based on this question, we have to do a calculation to see whether Puan Amelda achieved her financial goal. So, we have to minus the house value 600,000 ringgit with the value of down payment 60,000 ringgit. So, you will get 540,000 ringgit. Next, we have to divide 60,000 60,000 ringgit by 72 months, which is six years, you will get 833 ringgit. But Puan Amelda can only afford to buy 600 as her saving are only, only 600 are left. If she times the savings of 12 months for six years, then she will get 43,200, which is lower value than the monthly she have to pay 800. 833 ringgit monthly. In conclusion, Puan Emelda can't afford the house because her monthly savings is only 600 ringgit, whereas the total savings per month should be 833 ringgit. Now I would like Nitya to continue this presentation. Okay, thank you, Shalini. Okay, good morning, teacher, and to all my friends. So I'm Nitya Sriya. So now I would like to explain the question, which is question two. So I will start to explain the question now. Okay. This question is in Dui language. So if you guys don't understand in English or Malay, you guys can refer in both languages. Okay. So Mr. Boon works as the hotel manager at the three-star hotel with a monthly net salary of 4,500. He also works as a perfume sale agent to supplement his income. Each month, Mr. Boon estimates to receive a sales commission of RM400. This monthly spending budget is as follows. So I am giving you guys one minute to observe the table. I guess you guys already observed the table. Okay, so I'm continuing to explain the question. Huh? Mr. Boon, Daddy, Sharvini. Uh, Mr. Boon dedicates ten percent of his income as a monthly fixed deposit to achieve his financial goals. Prepare a monthly personal finance plan for Mr. Boon. Okay, so next slide, Sharvini. Okay. Uh, so, the per monthly personal finance plan for Mr. Boone is positive cash flow of RM450 is good because he can save money in case of emergency or invest in a bank and enjoy the interest on savings. Uh, next question. B. Comment on the surplus or deficit that Mr. Boone experienced based on the financial plan.
Okay, uh, so this is Mr. Boone's monthly financial plan. Okay, net income. Okay. Salary of Mr. Boone is 4,500 and the commission he received is RM400. Then the total monthly income is 4,500, I mean 4,900. Then we must minus fixed monthly savings, 10% of monthly earning. So uh, the he must minus with 490. Then the income balance is 4,410. Then he must pay housing loan installment for 800. Then he will pay insurance for 400. Then the total fixed expenses is 1,200. Okay, uh, next minus monthly variable expenses. Then he will eat at a fancy restaurant for 150. Then he will travel for RM900. Then he will pay utility bills for 170. Then he will pay toll and petrol expenses for 250. Then uh, he will pay internet bill for RM800. Then he will spend food and drinks for 1200 then the total variable expenses is 2790 so the surplus of income is 420 uh, so that's all my explanation for question two thank you uh, so i'll be continuing my presentation by giving summary for this chapter Okay, smart goal. Smart concept. Okay, S is for specific, M is for measurable, A is for attainable, R is for realistic, and T is for time bound. Okay. Monthly savings need to be achieved the goal. Okay. Financial management process. Okay. There are five process in financial management, which is setting goals, evaluating financial status, creating a financial plan carrying out financial plan and reviewing and revising the progress. Okay, uh, next is to find cash flow, we must take the total income minus the total expenses. Then to find total income, we must take active income plus passive income, then minus with fixed monthly savings, then minus with saving for emergency fund. So then you will get the total income. So next is total expenses. So to find total expenses, we must take fixed expenses plus with variable expenses. Then if then at last, if cash flow is negative, try to cut some variable expenses. So that solved my presentation. Now I know we'll proceed with some quiz that we have prepared. I hope you guys got to spend some time with us. Okay, now I will spin uh, the wheel and uh, one name will come out and will answer the question. Okay, answer the first question. Is Anka here? Anka Mita? Sangka? Okay, if you have problem in your mind, you can use the chat box there. Okay, Sangka Mitra? Okay. 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 Long term as short term financial goals. Is it true or false?
is the question appear on your screen? Not yet. No, teacher. Okay. Okay, long-term financial goals are as important as short-term financial goals. Is it true or false? Sanka? True. <laughs> yeah, true. And next. Are you spinning, Will? Okay, the second question. No, are you spinning or not? Um, presenting the question, did you? Uh, no, you already left out. You left the presentation already. Present again. Okay, Rita. Can see now? Yes. Yeah, can see. Okay, can, can. Okay, the second question is for Shamila. Shamila, what is your answer? Who's Shamila? Yeah. I think she already left up. Okay. She left out, so you spin again at the... I think she already left out. Okay. Okay. Is Rutra here? Rutra? Can see the question or not? Can, can see. Rutra, can you answer Rutra? the question? Or any other girls who wants to help Rutra? Me, teacher. Uh, my answer is C, interactive. Yes, correct. Congratulations. Next scene. We know them. How can someone achieve the long-term financial goal? Um, B. Increase monthly savings. <laughs> oh, correct. Okay, next. Okay, Fatini. Yes. Question number four. What someone can do to generate additional income? E. <laughs> yes, correct. Congratulations. Okay, next question.
Okay, is Sri Neha here? Sri Neha? No, she's not here. Okay. Okay, I'll question number five. Okay, uh, I think C. C. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's all from our group. Thank you for, for your participation. Any question you want to ask that group, group four? Okay, I have question. Okay, we come back for just now the last part. Nitya explain question number two. Okay, I want to see question number one just now. Sharveni, can you present again question number one? Yes, so sure, sure teacher. The last part, no? Just now, uh, I think you present the question number one. Okay, the last part just now. Okay, next slide. Huh? So, you minus all the expenses. So, okay, you get 1,600. Then, the cash flow of 1,600 is good. Okay, that's a cash flow. Okay, uh, part B, uh, one ML does uh, plan to buy a house worth 600,000 ringgit over six year period with a down payment of 60,000. Okay, he wants to achieve the 60,000 sebenarnya, okay. Can Juan ML achieve her financial goal? That means uh, he want, he, she wants to buy in six year, that means 72 months. Okay, 833 ringgit. Okay. Why datang dari mana 6 times 12, 600 ring, times dengan 600 ringgit ni? What is this 600? Can you show the table just now? Simpanan, 600. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, 600. Okay, simpanan 600. Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide, 600. No? Okay, simpanan lah. You calculate the simpanan 43,200. Okay, so 1,600. Dia memang tak boleh achieve. Huh? Can't afford the house because her monthly saving is only 600. Where you take this example? Textbook ah. Huh? Hello, girls. Can under can listen. No? We take from exercise book, teacher. Exercise book, lah. Okay, okay. That means you are referring to the monthly savings, saja.
This cash flow nak buat apa? 1600 ni. That means only for emergency purposes 6600. Hello girls. Yes teacher. Yes teacher. Okay, never mind, never mind. This example tak apa. Because you take from the buku ah, buku rujukan lah, buku latihan. Yes teacher. Okay, okay, never mind. We just delete this one lah. Okay, tak apa. Okay, so do you all understand chapter 10? Consumer Mathematics Financial Management. What you know yes, yes, yes. so far. Okay, what you know so far from this um, chapter? Smart concept. Okay, the first thing is uh, smart concept. Okay, before smart concept, you must know five financial management process. Uh. Okay, you must um, remember. You must remember five financial management process. Banyak kena ingat nota lah. Okay. Then uh, the first part setting goals. So how many goals you have? Two types of goals. Two types. Uh. One is two, short two. term. Another one is long term. Okay. What is the um, uh, key components? Smart. Okay. S for? Specific. Specific and? Measurable. Measurable A. Antainable. Antainable are? Realistic. Realistic. And Realistic. E? Time bond. Time bond. So, okay, now given a situation, can you explain what is S-M-A-R-T? That will be your question, no? For your exam after this, okay? Nanti lah, okay? If I give a question or uh, a situation, okay? You have to explain, okay? Using SMART. S, what is S? From the situation given, what is S? Specific. Specific here refers to the goal. Okay? Then, M, measurable. Is it measurable? Boleh diukur. Then A, attainable. Attainable, that means ada tak dia sesuai. Okay. Dia boleh tak achieve. Attainable. Okay. Then, realistic. Financial plan yang dia buat tu adalah realistic tak dengan apa yang dia nak capai. Then, time bond. In dalam masa berapa bulan, berapa tahun dia nak achieve. Okay. Must explain according to the SMART. Okay. Dapat? This topic is that is the SMART lah. Main thing ialah SMART. Okay. Either short term or long term, dua-dua kena memenuhi SMART. Okay. Okay. So far? Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. Understand? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. So today exercise you continue with the next that day is uh, ten point one a. So today you continue with the next one. Now self practice ten point one b. Okay, teacher. Okay, so um. Uh, 